What's up, guys? This is Tucker. I'm here for episode number 26 of the Real Deals podcast. I got an annoying dog barking in the background, so hopefully you guys can hear me over him. But this is actually going to be a Real Deals TV episode, kind of crammed into our podcast. So episode 26 of the podcast slash Real Deals TV with the annoying dog. We're here today at one of our uh, renovation projects. This is one of our smaller projects that uh, we don't do many of these anymore, but this is uh, kind of where we started in the business, which was doing ranch-style homes. And this one is in a fantastic neighborhood here in the Lake Oswego area. And what we've done is we took a thousand square foot house and we're gonna convert it into a 1500 square foot house. And uh, we've actually got a buyer already lined up for it. So come on inside, I'll show you guys what we're doing and uh, hopefully you can learn something. All right guys, so we're inside what used to be the garage. This was a two car garage uh, and that was the living area. And then out there uh, we have what was the carport. And so what we're doing is we're actually taking the carport area and you can see we got some bracing under there. We're gonna be pouring a new little foundation for it and we're gonna take that carport and convert it into the new two car garage. And then we're gonna take this two car garage and we're gonna convert it into a little bigger living area and then a master suite. So as you can see, we've kind of trenched around the outside of the slab here. And the reason why we did that is because we're bringing new plumbing in for the master suite. We always like to try and make sure that the, any sort of a master has a, uh, a bath and uh, some sort of a larger closet. That way it can be considered a master suite, which really helps us sell our product at the end of the day. So the other thing is, is that by adding this square footage, like I mentioned in the previous segment, we're taking a house that was just under a thousand square feet and we're adding about 500 square feet here. So we're adding a tremendous amount of value uh, versus what it's actually going to cost us to convert this. So that's kind of how we're making a lot of our money on this deal. We're adding 500 uh, livable square feet and the cost to do so is a lot less than what we can sell that finished square feet for. So we, by doing so, we create a margin for ourselves. So this is what will be your future living area, probably out to about here, and then everything back behind you here is gonna be our new master suite. So let's continue our tour. As we come in here, you've got what will be kind of a galley kitchen here. So you've got kitchen, and then this will go out to your covered outdoor living. We're gonna do a little covered patio that comes off the back here. And uh, we always like to do covered patios here in the Portland area because it rains like nine months out of the year. So you can't ever go in your backyard if you don't have something covered. So again, kitchen, this will be uh, kind of where we're gonna put in all new cabinets, uh, pretty much brand, a brand new kitchen, obviously. You can see that it's, it's totally gutted out. Now the other thing you can see is that all these studs and the floor are all sprayed white. And the reason why we did that is because this house was one of those smoker houses. And uh, the gal that lived here was a chain smoker for years and years and years, and her mom owned it before her, and she was a chain smoker for years and years and years. So it was just disgusting in here. But, we pulled out all the walls, all the drywall, all the insulation, and it still stunk. And so the only way for us to deal with that is to get like a primer kills product and have our painter come in here and spray out everything that you can see here to kind of seal in that stench. Uh, we've done homes in the past where we didn't do this and we finished the home and it still had a slight stench of smoke to it and it really hurt us uh, trying to sell the house. So we're kind of taking it as an extra precaution by doing it on this home, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, the added cost of doing it is well worth it to make sure that our home doesn't smell like smoke when we're done with it. Let's head down the hall here and I'll show you what we've got going on. So you're gonna have your coat closet right here. This is gonna be your second entrance into the kitchen. So this will be kind of uh, probably refrigerator It'll go around, we've always put the sink in front of the uh, window so you can look outside while you're doing your dishes. And then as you come further down the hallway here, you'll have bedroom one or an office if somebody wants to. Uh, as you can see here, this wall was actually opened up, so it was really kind of a, a two bedroom when we bought it. Originally, this was a bedroom of its own. So we're gonna frame this in, we're gonna close it up. This will be bedroom one or an office. Generally, it's closest to the living space, so somebody will probably use it as an office if they don't need it as a bedroom. This here will be bedroom two. It's a little bit bigger, um, so somebody would probably use this over that. Plus you got your, your little bigger closet area there. We'll kind of meander back into what would be the hallway. So this here is gonna be the hallway. And then this used to be the old master suite. So you've got a little bigger closet here. Uh, the room isn't very big though, so this really wouldn't be considered a master suite. It was just more the master. Uh, but what the old uh, owner did do is they added on. And this used to be a bathroom off of the master. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a new bathroom back in here and that way you've almost got two suites but the other one will be much larger. 
And then as we head back out, I think I forgot to show you the other bathroom. So that was the bedroom we're just in. Now we're gonna look at the uh, other bathroom that's already existing. As you can see, it's rotted out. There was a lot of leakage that happened over the years and then it actually went into the wall too. So this is all rotted. So we're gonna have to tear out all this, reframe it and actually reside the outside as well. Um, you can see it got into the floorboards as well and this is, this is all pretty rotted and needs to be replaced also. So kind of a mess in here, which is uh, why we had to get the house. Let's go out back, check out the backyard. Hopefully the dog won't bark at us so you can hear what I'm saying, but let's see. be quiet. So as you come into the backyard here, you can see you got a great big lot, which is fantastic. Um, you also notice that the yard is dug up and this is not a sprinkler system. This house is actually on septic. So as you kind of look through here, you can see uh, one of the supply lines into the tank that supplies the poo. And then uh, that there is the actual septic tank. And so the tank itself is leaking and uh, it's not functioning as it should. So we're actually gonna be replacing the tank and uh, that'll help ensure that uh, the buyer that buys it from us uh, doesn't have any issues with their septic system in the future. Now there's usually three types of systems that houses have. You're either connected to the city sewer system, and if that's the case, you have uh, basically a sewer line that you need to check out if you're buying the home, or you have a cesspool, which is basically a big giant hole in the ground that all the, uh, you know, piss and shit and things like that kind of go into and disperse way down in the ground, and then the other is a septic tank where all the waste comes out of the house, it goes into the tank, and then it disperses into the drain field. And so the drain field actually runs all the way around the backyard here. We don't have that dug up, fortunately. Um, it would be an absolute fortune to replace all of that in addition to the tank. So uh, where we're standing right here, this is gonna be your outdoor covered living. Um, so we're gonna kinda come off, kinda cover this, and then we're gonna put in, uh, bring a gas line out right here, and we're gonna stub it out for barbecue. We always do that so that people don't have to get new propane tanks. It's always a nice little feature. So once we're done with this house, it's gonna be a great little place. Like I said, it's already pre-sold. Um, it's in pretty much one of the last affordable neighborhoods in the Lake Oswego area. So it's gonna be a hot, hot property. Let's head back inside before this dog starts barking. All right, guys, that was kind of the tour of what we've got going on here at this uh, renovation project. One last thing is uh, you can see up front here, we got this huge hedge that's kind of grown over the years. Uh, it was an older lady that lived here before. And so she really wanted to kind of make sure that nobody could see in the house. And so we're actually gonna cut this all down. That way you can actually see the house from the curb. Uh, that's a big thing when you're selling your rehabs. You wanna make sure that you can see the house because it's gonna be nice and new and look great. So by leaving this hedge up here, it's really not helping uh, your curb appeal. And at the end of the day, it's not gonna help the value that you get out of the house. So make sure that you uh, make your homes visible when you do rehab them if they're not already. So that pretty much wraps up uh, episode number 26. Uh, here of the Real Deals podcast slash Real Deals TV. We'll be back next week with a, an audio podcast, but like I said, we're trying to mix it up and get out in the field and show you guys kind of what we actually have going on in our own business. And uh, we're just getting started to frame in this project here, so I thought it'd be a good time to come out in the field and show you guys what we got going on. So I'm your host, Tucker Marahue. I'll see you guys next week. 